Hey, it's Jake from Let's Go Resell. I'm so excited to be here today. This is part three of the massive 50 year comic haul. In this video, we're gonna review how these comics are being prepped for CGC grading and also how this epic haul was found. A lot of people are asking me, how is this found? And we're gonna review that with you today. At the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a short teaser about part four and I'm very excited for that as well. Please subscribe if you're getting value from this content and like the video. If anyone has a comic collection that they would like us to check out, please email me at info at letsgoresale.com. That will be in the description. Also in the description, I'm gonna put all the supplies that you're seeing from these videos. So if you're seeing any supplies that you would like to order yourself, I'll put a one-stop shop at the in the description so you can go there. This is gonna be great, let's get into the video. can potentially uh, feel like, well, one am selling mine, so he's about to flood the market. Yeah, we're too small. We're okay. testing. But yeah, this stuff is really cool. So what's all this stuff? <clears throat> this is what happens after we send something in to get graded and it comes back, they get to score. Are you close already? Yeah, so the, so the score goes anywhere from a zero to a 10. So we have a nine and eight here. And so we, we didn't get that many nine eights with this hull because the nine eights more hard to hard to grab. But so a ten and a nine point nine is virtually impossible. Like yep. they're really not for, for the public. I guess you could say consumption. It's literally like it came off the printing press. Someone never. It really probably didn't touch human hands. A ten. I've never seen a ten. We've done this for years. Plus, I've never seen. You just got a nine point nine recently. One nine point nine yeah. out of thousands. Yeah, I mean, exactly. so it's like it's so rare. People don't bank on that. So really, the true highest number you can get publicly is a 9.8 now when you're in the nines it goes by even numbers they'll go 9.8 9.6 9.4 9.2 and 9.0 once you get past they start going in 0.5 increments just to speed it up so you'll get an 8.5 8 7.5 7 6.5 6 and all the way down here. to 0.5 9.4, 9.6, 9.8. That's a perfect example. So if you can see these books right here to the side of these 9.8s, I mean, you're looking at perfection in the comic world. And that's where people pay big, big money. And so, obviously, the lower the, the pointage, the less money you can get for it. But the difference sometimes, when you're in the 9s, it's significant. Like, an 8.0 to an 8.5, it might be like a $20 difference. But a 9.8 from a 9.6 could be hundreds of dollars because someone who's like collecting and putting this in their personal collection for an investment or on their wall, they want the best of the best, right? So people pay an absolute premium. So that's where you start getting into anger issues with CDC, right, Cliff? Mm -hmm, yeah. Because so we sent out, what, what was it, 50 or 60 uh, X-Men 4, the first appearance of uh, Omega Red. And they should have at least, we, we feel that should have, Half of them should have been 9.8s, and we only got three. Yeah, so Cliff's been doing this for years and years. He's a presser, which means he knows how to take a comic book and clean it up and get it ready for um, grading purposes. Now, if you get a book and you do color touching with pencil, like pencils and markers, it's considered restoration, and they'll grade it. They have, they have black lights. They have a whole bunch of camera systems, sophisticated equipment to figure out that you've done that, so you can't hide that. And if you get it restored, it's going to be significantly less money because people who are true collectors want original, authentic stuff, right? Like if you get something really, really old from the 1940s, it's just hash and don't really understand it. Restoration could be fun because you can bring back to life and show someone. But you got to remember restoration means it's not original. You're adding parts to it. And so there, before it becomes restored the rest of its life, and it gets a purple label from CGC. So true collectors typically stay away from that or they're paying significantly less money for that. But there are things that you can do in recent years where they say, hey, you can make this comic better, and which gives you potential bumps in your, in your point grading system that they don't consider restoration. And such things is that the big original. one. Yeah, to keep it original. So one of the big things is pressing it. So you'll hear comic pressing. And what that means by that is essentially that. You're pressing the book. And what that does is it takes out little wrinkles, takes out little, you know, imperfections that have bumped up on the paper. On, on the paper that uh, if by doing this, you can go from an eight to a 9.2 or a 9.4, yeah, exactly. which is all money to do that. And people say, well, how do you press something? And it's as simple as that. We use like shirt presses. Yep heats it up, presses and we can do it. videos for the pressing too. Yeah, we can show them. Yeah, awesome. really to hide. So. Yeah, 
Yeah. I'll show you all my tools and all that. Yeah, oh my gosh. For that. You just gotta make sure there's no little profound bumps or anything like that because yeah. that can knock it down. But but if you get good at that and press your own books, you could pay services to do it right. Um, that adds to the overall cost of pressing a comic book, but there's certainly people out there who've done this for a lot of years who've mastered it that will do that for you. Um, me and Cliff have a good synergy and partnership here because he's able to press. You know, I'm able to fund some things, and so we have some strengths that have come together that make sense, and so I, don't, I, I can avoid costs of having to press it with some other service, right? CGC will do it too. They'll press your book and- It's expensive. And you have to pay an extra yeah. fee for it. But the thing I don't like about them is um, it typically adds months, months and months. I feel like they're pushed and we don't have that restraint. We don't have a time restraint. Yeah. We make sure that it's right yeah. and that it's good. And then we send it out to CGC and then we lose control, unfortunately, but for the pressing side, for us, we can control it to get the best possible presses and the best possible original condition possible. Yeah. When you have CG that much money like tied up in your, in your comic collection, you don't want for months and months and months. Like, we've even had stuff that took a year to get back. Yeah. Big press, yes, right? we did. And can you imagine sitting at your investment <clears throat> and, and it doesn't come back for a year? That's a long time for your money to be out. Right. So being able to find a pressing service that does a really good job for you or internally, significantly speeds up the time for them to grade your stuff gets back to you and if you're a personal collector you, you get to have your awesome beautiful artwork in your hands faster or if you're a you know a reseller to a certain extent with other books that puts that back in your hands quicker right a book can be hot one month and being cold the next month it's yeah. kind of hard in this industry right so you send it out to cgc it gets cold that's unfortunate yeah pressing remember the pressing took six to seven months last time we sent them out yeah. so we started to learn the skills ourselves yeah because of covid yeah well COVID. covid helped uh it kept us inside so we got bored and we started developing these skills by ourselves yeah. <clears throat> which uh turned out to be way more profitable uh less time consuming um, yeah. so we're able to turn a profit and put books in our collections way faster and there's a learning curve i mean there's plenty of books that we've gone through and we're like we damaged them, you know, we made them worse. And so it can be a little nerve wracking at first when you start. Not a lot. We, we started out with some really cheap books yeah. based on the theory that, hey, we got to learn how to do, what, to do what we're doing. But there's other things you can do. Yeah. You can use erasers. You can do like if there's dirt on there, removing the dirt's not considered restoration because you're it's not part of the original comic. Right. So you're taking that off, but that'll bump up your grade. So we've gotten really, really well at knowing what can be taken off versus what is going into the restoration model. And Cliff knows all that stuff. So he does it for a living. He presses comic books for other people as well. Um, he's really, really good. I've seen tons and tons of nine eights come back from his work where it wouldn't have been that way. And so, and our money's significantly gone up. We like to that, focus so. on 9.8s. Yeah. That's, that's what we want to do. That's what we want to see is 9.8s. So when we buy a collection, we'll meticulously go through it. We'll look at the condition of the book. Um, and if there's any spine ticks or anything like that, it'll go to another pile. But anything that's that can be pressed into a 9.8 will literally go into its own separate pile and be worked. For instance, here's two 9.8s. <clears throat> Cliff, why don't you show them what that... Tell them the significance of that of that newsstand one, dude. So, um, so this is a 9.8. We have it custom labeled for from CGC. That is Dr. Doom. This is a book he pressed. This is a book that I pressed. It was not in very super great condition it was not a 9.8 at first but uh the significance for this is that it's the first appearance of omega red which it actually tells us on the label here i don't know if you can see that now cliff why is a newsstand oh. significantly more money and then, than a normal and like, so what, what we have here stand? so so what we have is uh, a newsstand i'm sorry a newsstand um edition which is more rare than a regular direct edition. And so we think in the comic book world that it's a cup, it's about 5% of, of, of an entire uh, issue. Um, so newsstand is much more rare and uh, that bumps up the value. And they're Especially usually handled pretty poorly because they are on a newsstand. What, what yep. rating do you think it was before you fixed it? Uh, they were all at least near mint, which is a 9.4. Okay. And so these were a little bit wavy. Gotcha. Um, and so... But the price on this book from a 9.4 to 9.8, a 9.4 is probably under $100. Yeah. And a 9.8 newsstand, <clears throat> now you're looking at... About four right now, $400. $400? Right? So, I mean, I mean, to spend there and spend a few minutes pressing that and doing that and cleaning up is significantly upped our investment. Absolutely worth yeah. doing that. 
So that, that's why we try so hard for the 9.8s. Even, even the 9.6 is only about $100 right now yeah. compared to 9.8, $400. So it's a big deal. Now, depending on that's what the book is, so it's always different, it. right? But yeah, but yeah. But that, that's are, a possibility. Yeah. yeah. There's another one he pressed down there. And it's cool. I like that custom label with Wolverine. That's such a fun book. So these have, have been the ones you've been doing for a while. What did you think about the last haul? Like, what, were, what was your, <laughs> oh what gosh. would you, have you ever seen anything like it? I've, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, me and Dave, we've come across collections that, that almost compare. But to have a collection like this in such great condition, the guy... He, he was speculating on all these major characters and he was a key collector. He was a speculate, speculating key collector, which did, it didn't really happen that much because people usually buy uh, their runs because they like to read the story. They'll have one through 100 or, but to have specific keys like this um, for, for all these years, how, how long has it been sitting for? 40 years? Maybe, yeah, 40, 50 years. Yeah, and so back then, it was rare to have all the, all of these keys just taken off of the shelf into these bags and really just put into these boxes without being read. It is so incredibly rare to find something like this. Yeah, I mean, this guy, he collected this in mind to flip it one day. I mean, how do we know that is because he speculated on really big first appearances. Um, he had multiple copies of the same comic book. If you're just getting it to read, you, why would you have more than one, right? But he had multiple. And not only that, what makes this collection so significant, not only the rarity of the books that he collected and the duplicates, but the, the, the quality of it. In the comic industry, quality is huge, huge, huge in, in regards to how much value you can pull back in um, from those books later on when you, when you flip them or sell them. Um, for instance, like I think Action Comics number one, let's say the first Superman, this is extreme condition because that's the first books worth the most money. But you can have like a 1.0, it's worth, you know, $800,000. But if you have a 9.0, it's worth $3.5 million. I mean, same book, but the condition's just better in one versus the other. And But the swing on value is significant. So this collection, this guy just collected the best of the best. I mean, a lot of the books that are in here are 9.8 candidates. So the sky's the limit. We really don't know what the value of this collection is until it comes back from CGC. Now, CGC, once again, it's human beings like the rest of us. They can have good days. They can have bad days. They have technology that's fantastic. I'm not going to speak and say I know exactly everything they do. Um, but, you know, I can't look at a book and say that's a 9.8 for sure, in my opinion, because it goes to them. It might come back a 9.4. You know what I mean? Um, they see something I didn't see or whatever the case may be. So... We really don't know what this entire value of this collection will be until it comes back. It could be 10 times worth more than what we're ma imagining, or it could be significantly less, but we did good. I mean, yeah, the collection did. came from the, the, the gentleman died. He, he passed away a decade ago. It, his kids picked it up. They have no passion for it. They don't care about it. They just wanted it out there moving. Oh, yeah. Right? All right. For the last collection that we got, the videos, we, we saw the collection of the videos, so, uh, a lot of it. So the guy, his dad died, contacted us, said, hey, I'm gonna bring up five long boxes of 60 long boxes, and I can't bring all of them up, so you're gonna have to make your decision to purchase these off of five long boxes. So we go through them, fine, we think we want it. We purchase everything, and everything that we got is was all a gamble. They didn't care about it, they didn't want it. They said, take it, and we don't care about it. So we know what to do with it. And I think we just got really super lucky. Um, What's the saying? The harder you work, the luckier you get. I mean, there's, that's some, true. there's, we, there's some skill there too. I mean, we've done this a long time. We can get a feel for a box. Out there. You know, there's a lot of collections I've seen over the years. Cliff can probably contest it or, you know, agree to this is that um, you can tell really quickly as, uh, you know, as someone who's done this for a while that a collection has been picked through. And what we mean by that is someone's seen it went through and pulled out those valuable key books worth value, you know, worth a lot of money, pulled those out and left everything else. And in what, 80% of the collections you see that you're going to, that's what you're going to run into. Yeah. Yeah. So it's because a game they've, of they've, they've been out in the wild for a long time. These, these guys have been trying to push their collections out for a while selling it. Yeah. And people like us, we like to go and get what we want. You know, why would we get anything that we don't want? Yeah. Um, but we've, we've come across what hundreds of collections probably now. Yeah, and small so, and large, and 80% of the time, it's all, there's no value in that collection. Yeah. 
at least monetary, right? Now, from a reader's perspective, or you just you just want to collect it, you just want to have a run or something like that, it's always worth to go look at that for a private <clears> investor, right? But for a flipper, you know, 80% of the time you're going to run into a collection that's already been picked through. So, you know, we've done this, well, you know, well enough to go through five boxes. You can tell really quick, oh, Hulk 21 is sitting in here. This this has not been touched before, right? And so yeah, we, had a, we had a viewer say, my jaw dropped and stayed dropped the whole time. <laughs> Someone else said, not only did you get keys, but you got duplicates of keys. Right, right. Exactly. It's just a mixture of everything. Quality, quantity, you know, just rarity. I mean, this is a collection that doesn't come around every day. It's most, I mean, it's probably the best collection me and Cliff, have, you know, in my opinion, have ever picked up. We picked up other good collections. But not for a good price as well, you know. We kind of got a, we kind of got a full gambit of everything going in our direction on this one. So, but it's just it's due diligence, you know. For every month that goes by that we see a craft collection, you know, we just stick with it. It's perseverance, you know what I mean. I think a lot of, you know, that market reselling is someone who's willing to be dedicated, persevere through the tough times. You know, you always get that thought for someone like me. It's like, oh, it's drying up, right? Yeah. This area is dry. There's nothing left to get here. You just never know. Yeah, you can't be down on yourself. Yeah. You've always got to be positive and keep like <clears throat> literally. You put positive vibes out, positive vibes come back yeah. in, right? And so, so we 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 go out. We we have we have come across so many leads, and we just never know what we're gonna get. We're excited to go out and look. You know, it's like, hey, you say you have some comic books. I I want to come see, even if it's good, bad, whatever. We love it. We love talking to people about comics. We love putting this in our collections. We like making money, trading yeah. as just the hobby itself. We, we just enjoy the whole thing. I think people really like us too because we, it's like Cliff had mentioned, we don't just sit down and start talking money and feel like this cold calculated, let's just get this nah. out of here. No, we sit down with people, have a good laugh, love to ask them where the collection came from, You know, what's their passions behind it and really get to know who they are. They get to know who we are. Um, I mean, we're, we're private collectors first and foremost. We have collections that we personally have that we're never going to let go of, you know, hopefully yep. the kids get it someday. And it's awesome from a standpoint of investment. It's awesome from a standpoint of just having this really cool artwork and, you know, these stories of where all these beloved characters came from that you see in the movies today, right? This, this stuff's not going away. Your kids are growing up on it right now, and they're gonna they're gonna continue to pass that on to their. It's like it's like the Disneyland appeal. You know what I mean? I just went to Disneyland last week, and the rides kind of felt a little bit you know dated, but people absolutely love it because you know my parents went there when they were kids, and it brings back that nostalgic feeling, and now they're gonna pass it on to their kids, and so on and so forth. Comics is the same thing. You're not gonna go anywhere. This is my stock market. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ups and downs, and it's, yeah. the whole process is so much fun to me. You know, from getting it back from that final. CGC and then sometimes you have to hold on to them. You know, there might be a character that hasn't been used yet and it's just a matter of when, not if. And so sometimes if you're a, if you're you a reseller, yeah, so. you just hold on to them from, from whatever standpoint you want to take it from. But I don't know, I love it, man. It's super fun. You know, everyone's out to try to make a buck, take care of their families, but if you can kind of combine both worlds of your hobby plus, you know, taking care of your needs, then it's a win-win in my opinion. Yeah, so. I agree. What would you say to the one commenter that said this is fake? What would you say? The collection's fake? Yeah. I mean, teach their own, right? It doesn't matter. We, 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 it's our reality, you know, and we, and we enjoy it and we're obviously having fun with it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's not fake. Like we, we put ourselves out there. We put our energy and our time and our money and, um, it's just a matter of time before we find another one. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely 100% real. You guys have seen us handle it. We've grabbed it. Yeah, and we know how to process it. We know how we know, we know what to do with it. Yeah. So then that's the big part. Yeah. But once again, you know, there's always going to be yeah. those those uh, skeptics that are in the world. But, you know, that just pushes you to be stronger and better yeah. and faster and try to be, you know, be more thorough and transparent. And love to answer any questions. You guys have any questions out there? We love this yeah. stuff so much. Love to interact with the community talk with those who have done this you know what what are your wins where your losses we're we're open books here we like this stuff a lot if, so, and we're always learning there i mean how comics so there are hundreds yeah, of thousands out learning. there there's always more to learn yeah. out there for <clears> sure so and then if you guys and if the the viewers want to watch uh how we ship out and how we um maintain our collections and our inventories and you know how we uh transact everything everything is transparent uh, that's why we do CGC is because we know exactly uh, what we're getting and we and the customer knows what they're getting and if they want to know more about that and see our process we'll show them the tools and, and our strategy and everything.
we'll show them everything. Fuck out. Nice. Yeah.